Can you automate your work in Unreal Engine with ChatGPT and Python? Let's find out. And one note here is that I'm not promoting AI and I'm not anti as well. I am here only to show you if it's gonna help you with your work or if it's maybe just a waste of your time. So let's automate a simple task. There is some material that takes three texture parameters, normal, roughness, and diffuse. When artists import their textures, they create a material instance, assign those textures, and they end up with something that they could assign to a mesh. And we could speed up that process with a script. They do it lots of times, there is tens of artists, we will save time and money. So we are going to tell ChatGPT that he is a senior technical artist. He works with Unreal, he knows Python. It knows where the material lays, here's the path, and he knows how it should work. Each texture has T underscore prefix and a suffix that corresponds to asset type. We also want to cover some edge cases. Maybe artists selected non-texture assets. We don't want to have a crash. Or maybe too many textures. Maybe normal was flipped. You get it real. Let's see if the script is gonna work when I paste it. And it does, and it's pretty cool. I like it, to be honest, I was surprised. I was going to create a video and tell you that it's gonna be completely broken, but it does work out of the box. It's not perfect, but it's also not that bad. For instance, I like the fact that it made a dictionary for suffix to parameter mapping. It even filters out things that are not texture to D type. So it kind of does the job. But on the other hand, it removes T underscore prefix using its length. It, it literally checks its length and it cuts certain number of characters from the very beginning. Amazing. Let's wait until some artist skips this T underscore and then we're going to have a wrong name in the best case. And in the worst case, if we were referring by name to something, we'll just have a bigger issue. Instead, we could just use a starts with function that is built in in a string support in Python. That would be way better. But in general, it's really cool. We can read the code, we can fix it. It's a super simple tool. It may not get many features in future. It's probably low maintenance and it's fine. It will save a lot of manual work anyway. We wasted very little time doing that. We can spend five minutes fixing it. It's all right. But if it was something bigger, that would be an issue. So first time lucky, it's great. But now um, let's see what can go wrong. I really wanted to show you that AI is not perfect and it's going to gaslight you. I told it to use unreal.gibberish library and it does everything to make me content. It's a yes man. It's going to make it up. It's going to lie straight into your eyes. And this code will not work. And it will still attempt to make it work instead of telling you that such thing doesn't exist. That's a huge issue. It's just hallucinating. And this case is obvious. You can always go to documentation, look if such class exists, maybe check function declaration, or it probably just rings a bell because it's called gibberish library. But what if it's something that you don't know or something that looks pretty, pretty legit? And I also have such example for you. Let's say that you want to expose a function that could be called from external application. To do that, we need a remote control API that is just a plugin inside Unreal and you can call REST calls, uh, REST-like calls, just like it was some website. So you can communicate with other applications, create a web UI and so on. In this very example, I simply want a function that takes an array of editor paths as an input and returns Windows paths. So we gave it some work to be done, not just to expose some API function, but this should be also pretty simple. So it begins pretty nicely. It declares some class and it uses uclass decorator. It also does same thing with function. It uses u function decorator, which is great. It uses Unreal decorator, decorators. It's amazing, but 
it did not declare what parameters this function takes and what it returns. So it's not gonna work. And honestly, if you were asking ChatGPT for help with remote control API, it's probably because you had trouble with that. And probably that was what you were lacking. And it's not gonna help you. But anyway, let's move on. Maybe we could fix that. Maybe everything else is fine. And I don't really have to dive deep into that code. I don't have to focus on the logic. What strikes me right in my eyes is that it uses convert relative path to full function, which does return a full path, but it's not a Windows path. It's editor full path. That means this is full path to the asset dot and then something else because, you know, the asset has also a part that says which package it is. That's what it does. If you really wanted to get a Windows path, you should have called unreal.systemlibrary.getSystemPath. It is really simple. It doesn't require much logic, but ChatGPT didn't get it. And if you ask me, <laughs> I would tell you that working with paths in Unreal and Python is a mess. There is Unreal System Library. There is uh, this paths library. And there are tools for working with packages, editor asset registry, and so on. There are many ways to get some path and converting between them is sometimes difficult. So I would ask ChatGPT to help me with that because if I was working with, uh, I don't know, maybe a bus script and I wanted to convert something or Python or anything, it would probably give me a good answer. But when it comes to Unreal Engine, it doesn't know what it's doing. And next, let's move on. I requested ChatGPT to register this functional startup. So when we start the editor, we can start communicating with other applications. And it made some long function that uses some factories, creates assets, loads those assets, calls some expo function, blah, blah, blah. And then it edits the config. And it's all unnecessary and made up because you don't need any factories or loading assets. If you want to declare a remote control API function, you just have to declare a class or a function using Unreal Decorators. And when they are imported, they will be registered. So we already have those decorators. It's almost done. The only thing we have to do is to call a single line that imports them. If we want to do it on startup, we have to create init underscore unreal.py file. And those are always automatically run on startup as long as they are in some content slash Python folder. We don't have to edit any configs, but even if we were doing to do that, look into that config. There are those sections like the slash Python script plugin. Those could be right. Those could be wrong. But the thing that strikes me is that there is that game slash Python path. But we already know that everything that is in game slash content slash Python is discovered by Unreal. And GPT told us to place our script there. So we don't need to add any additional path. So that's one thing. The other thing is that you can just edit that using project settings in Unreal, and it will automatically correctly edit those configs, and you will not have to think about adding something, skipping, and so on. But anyway, the simple way is to go with init Unreal. If you really want to, you can go with the config. So the conclusion is, ChatGPT can produce good scripts for Unreal, but it is very likely it will not. It will probably hallucinate. It will not tell you that it cannot do something. It will just make it up. And there is very little resources on Python in Unreal, and it just lacks sources to learn from. So my bet is that even if the model gets better, it will still struggle due to lack of resources. If you want to see some examples that actually work and have some reasoning behind and also explanations, check either TechArt 
Corner channel where you can find tutorials for free or one of my courses, either Unreal Engine Python automation course for those of you who like to code or Unreal Engine Blueprint automation for those who like blueprints and maybe would like to jump into designing tools that actually have some nice native interface. And that's it. Till next time. Bye.